Hi, my name is Jacob Thorup and I'm with TVS Pro. Today we're going to be looking at the TriCaster Advanced Edition line of switchers. The Advanced refers to the update that you can do for any of the switchers from the TC1 to the 410 to the 460 to the 8000 series of TriCaster switchers that uh, provides additional uh, effects and functionality that you don't get with the base model. The control surface that we're working with today is the 460. This is not an advanced tutorial or blog. This is kind of a general overview for people who are unfamiliar with the TriCaster, who would like to know more about it, um, are interested in using more advanced features on a system like this. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So just a quick overview of all of our surfaces that we're working with here. We have a keyboard. We have the TriCaster 460 control surface. I have a mouse. Um, and then we have two monitors up here. This is showing my program. So this is, if I'm live, um, this is what's going out to the world. And then I have my multi-view screen, which mimics the, uh, the, the TriCaster control surface down here. But it also has additional controls and uh, settings menus that we can get into. The TriCaster 410 that we're looking at right here has anywhere from about 4 to 20 inputs, depending on how you set it up. So the TriCaster uses what I like to refer to as a traditional program preview bus layout. These two windows, the preview and program window, correspond with these two sets of buttons. Preview is what we're thinking about sending out to the world or what uh, is going out next, basically. So if I select input four over here, it brings up my uh, main camera here. And if I want to take that, I can either go right up to the program and click that, and that's uh, switching across the bus. Or I can also use the fade bar here, and I can fade between the two sources, and I got kind of a fancy transition on there right now. Uh, I can also auto-take that, so there's an auto button that will automatically take that at the same rate that I've selected, which in this case is about a second, second, second and two frames, it looks like. Okay, looking at the control surface here on the TriCaster, it mimics what is up on your display output. So you have your preview program bus, you have uh, your utility, which uh, there might be other uses for this, but this is for setting up your downstream keyers, which you can see right here we have downstream keyer one and two. Um, I can select downstream keyer. Uh, downstream keyer is best understood as I want a graphic to be on the screen all the time, no matter what sources up basically so this would be like a logo bug so in this case i have um, dsk1 set up to net1 which in this case we've actually assigned this to one of our buffers and so if i go ahead and uh, take that we can see that uh, that is actually the tvs pro uh, logo right there and then if i select dsk2 over here under my utility um, setup here i've set network two which is uh, in this case let's, should be another buffer and there that is. And uh, we can auto-take those and put a transition on them and bring those in. But those will stay up uh, no matter what source I switch between. So if I switch here, if I switch there, oh, look, I got a basketball for a head. That's great. So over the years, I've worked on several live productions. Uh, most of them have been very simple uh, setups, or I've been camera operator or working as a floor director. Uh, as far as working on a TriCaster with the ME setup, this is reasonably new for me. So I had to spend some time to wrap my head around how the ME or mix effects work. For me, the best way to describe the mix effect bus is kind of thinking about it like a composition or a Photoshop file. You have several layers that you can stack on top of each other to add graphics and whatnot. And then uh, I have four MEs and I can recall those at a click of a button. So before the show, I would set those up and say, okay, well, this ME is going to be this, this ME is going to be that. Uh, for example, let me just show you what I've got set up here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put ME2 in the preview bus here. And if I hit go on that, it's a uh, I've got a little uh, next match graphic going on and then a lower thirds. And then I can go to my ME3 and take that. And I've got some keyed footage in a virtual set. And then if I go to ME4, I've got a, another one with that same, same guy in there. And if I switch across the bus, you can see there's three, there's two, there's one, there's me. Let's take a quick look on uh, how you set these uh, compositions up. That's what took a while for me to wrap my brain around. So here on the TriCaster board, we have uh, our key, um, and then you have an A layer and a B layer. So here on the multi-view monitor, you have ME1, ME2, ME3, and ME4. So I can go to each one of those, and I can say, okay, well, let's set this up 
uh, with whatever graphics I'm going to do. Uh, for the sake of, of what we're doing right now, I'm actually going to put it right in the program. Uh, ME2 is what we'll start out with here. So in ME2, I have DDR2 selected, and you can see down here, DDR2, I have that graphic selected. If I select a different one, a different one goes into DDR2. Um, I can also set these to rotate through. So I can hit play here and then set them to uh, automatically rotate. So now it's going to cycle through those automatically. Okay, so there's DDR2. Um, I have my uh, background set as the Pan PTZ camera right here. And then uh, that's set up through this, this A bus here. I can switch that over to, to four right there now. Now I'm the background here and I'm showing you who's going to be up in the next match. Uh, all of these uh, sources can be taken on and off uh, with a cut or they can also be taken on and off with an auto transition. Uh, right now I have those set up as fades, but we can just as easily come in here and we can say, oh, well, let's have those, uh, which one are we looking at? That's the lower third. We'll have a trajectory of, we'll have them come in and out like that. Kind of a left to right type thing. So now that graphic comes in left to right and goes out right to left. Um, and I can do the same thing for this guy right here. And we could have that one go up and down maybe. Seeing it, there it is right there. If I hit OK on that, now if I auto take that, that's going to come in like that. And I'll auto take this graphic. So uh, you could have an ME set up like this, and your announcer or whoever's talking could be saying whatever, and you could have some prepared graphics when they go to those. You can pop them in. They don't have to be up as soon as you go to the source, but the ME is set up so that you have those ready. You don't have to fumble for them, basically. OK, let's go ahead and look at ME3. This one's really interesting. So the TriCaster has a thing called virtual sets. And this basically means that I can put somebody on a green screen and do a live key with them and then insert them into a set that can actually be manipulated here. So right now we have uh, our, our speaker here behind a desk and it's kind of close, but the set, if I go, let's see, we're on ME3. So if I get over to ME3 here, I have a position slider here and I can actually zoom out to a larger set here. Now, that's cool, but I wouldn't want to fiddle too much with the, uh, with the zoom while it's live on set. I can also change position like this. But what I can do is I can set presets. So I have a wide preset here. And then I can also have a close preset and it automatically eases into those and eases out. I can set those transitions at different um, lengths too. And then if there's a, a new position I want, so I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go ahead and just position him up like this. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. In fact, this is where it was when we started, right? And then I'm going to go to presets and I'm going to go ahead and snap a picture of that position right there. So now when I go into my presets, I have three uh, preset positions I can go to. So I can go to this one, I can go wide, and then I can also jump back in and it has a nice ease in, ease out. It's not too abrupt. It's, it's usable for, for live, live uh, switching, which is really nice. So within these virtual sets, you can have uh, video sources that are keyed in. So in this case, we have the PTZ camera keyed in onto this monitor over here on the left-hand side. Um, but I can just as easily uh, go in and, and change that to be something else. So right now, that's what's on the B bus. So I could change that to four and it could be me. And hello, look, I'm on TV now, mom. Going back to the ME setup. So over here on the right-hand side, uh, right now we're sitting on we're sitting on ME4. You can see the setup there. You have our A bus and our B bus. So the B bus right now is keyed into the background. So I can change that to the camera over here, uh, or I can change it back to this PTZ. Over here to the right hand side, I can set what uh, my overlays are. So in this case, I have a lower third. And then I have a, in my graphics layer here, I'm going to go ahead and change what's in GFX1 here. Let's change that to this right here. So if I take this guy, now we have this kind of left hand graphic. I can put a lower third in there. 
I could position our actor around to maybe try to get that to fit a little better. Maybe I save that as a preset, like that. Now I can load in uh, from different sources. Right now I have uh, graphics one and two as my sources, but I could also uh, go look at my my buffers and I could say, oh, okay, well, let's load in whatever's in buffer two right there. And I had it taken already. And then we can come in here and this little uh, kind of four-way arrow with the dot in the center is where we can set up positioning of objects. And then we can also set up uh, scaling. So in this case, we could say, all right, well, let's go ahead and position this right down next to our player here. Positioning for the uh, virtual sets can also be set up using this joystick here on the 460 control surface. Um, we can control our zoom where we're sitting. Oh, how high does the set go here? Look at that. There. Thank you for watching. Rounding up what we talked about, the TriCaster Advanced Edition would be perfect for medium to large events. It might be a little overkill for a small one-man band setup, but it can be done. The TriCaster's systems range from about $5,000 up to multiple tens of thousands of dollars, depending on which system and what add-ons you're talking about. I've seen the TriCaster used on professional levels, sports broadcasts I've been involved with. I've also seen it as a secondary to a Ross system where they have multiple broadcasts going on and they have or mo multiple shows going on. They needed a second switcher and they tied a clean out from the Ross system into this. I've seen, seen several different setups, but very versatile gives you lots of inputs and outputs and lots of bells and whistles as far as effects go. We are a new tech TriCaster dealer. We sell the product. Uh, we help guide people through the process of deciding what would be the most appropriate piece of equipment for their situation. If you have any questions about this product or others, feel free to leave a question in the comments, give us a phone call, or come on down to our showroom. I'm Jacob Thorpe with TVS Pro. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.